Hey guys, how are you today? I hope you're well. I wanted to start with the big picture question because I tend to forget about that. And we have a new big picture question and it is, what is the church? Okay, you might think that's an easy question to answer. Well, it might not be. The church is not a building. That might have been what you're thinking of. Um, in fact, the church is all Christians everywhere who gather in their communities to worship and serve God. So the church is people, not a building. Of course, we meet in a building called a church, but when we ask this question, what is the church? We're talking about the people who get together and who worship God and who want to obey him. So that is our big picture question. And our Bible story will talk more about the church and the people in the church. But before we start our story today, I want to test out your deciphering skills. That's a big word. And what I mean is I want to see how well you are at deciphering or figuring out the difference between these two nickels, okay? So one of these nickels is a real nickel. It's the real deal, it's genuine. It's truly a nickel. And the other one is a fake or an imposter. And it's just pretending to be the real deal. It's not really. So you might be able to tell, I don't know, maybe it's easy, maybe it isn't. Which nickel is the imposter? The one that's just pretending to be a real nickel. Can you guess? It's this one. This one is the fake one. Whoops, I just dropped it. <laughs> so our story today comes from the book of Acts. That is the New Testament. So it's in the second half of your Bible. The book of Acts comes after the book of Romans. And this is a, um, actually, Luke is the one who wrote the book of Acts. And this comes, this specific story comes from chapter five. And it is about a married couple, a husband and a wife, who pretended to be generous but in fact, they weren't. And the Apostle Peter knew that they were not being honest. They were trying to, trying to lie and, and hold back the truth. And they learned a very hard lesson. Um, and it, it's a story that reminds us that we can't lie to God. We can't hide anything from God. He knows us inside and out. He knows every thought that we think. He knows everything we say and do, either on the inside or the outside. So we cannot hide anything from him. And that's important to remember. So who do we have reading our story today? We have Sydney Mallory. Some of you may remember her. She is one of our youth at In Town. And she used to help out in the Kingdom Kids classes. And I know that many of you really enjoyed having her in the class because she likes to have a lot of fun. So she does a great job reading today's story. So let's listen to Sydney as she reads from Acts chapter 5. Ananias and Sapphira, Acts 4 through 5. The early church was growing. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the apostles were telling people that Jesus had been raised from the dead. A large group of believers had met together in Jerusalem. They shared everything they had. If someone had more than he needed, he gladly gave it away, so everyone had what he needed. One man, Barnabas, sold a field and gave the money to the apostles. The apostles used the money to help with people in need. Everyone who had houses or land did the same. Ananias and his wife, Sapphira, sold some land and pretended to give all of the money to the apostles, but they kept some money for themselves. When Ananias brought the money to the apostles, Peter asked him, 
Why are you lying to the Holy Spirit? You could have been honest about what you did with the money, but instead you lied, not to us, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down, died, and was buried. Everyone who heard about this was filled with fear. About three hours later, Sapphira came to the apostles. She did not know what happened to her husband. Peter asked her, is this all the money you got for the land? Yes, she said, that's all of it. Peter said, why did you and your husband agree to test the Lord? Then Sapphira fell dead too. Great fear came on everyone in the church and all who heard about these things. What does it mean to fear God? When the Bible speaks about fearing God, it's not what you probably think of about hiding from something and not getting around something because you're afraid of it. Fearing God means understanding his power and holiness. When we honor and respect God, we are fearing him. When we understand how dangerous it is to be an enemy of God, we are fearing God. When we love him and we want to be his children and we want to have faith in Jesus, that is fearing God as well. Will you pray with me? And let's ask God to help us to fear him in this way. Father, thank you for all that you do for us. Lord, help us to fear you and draw near to you. Give us an understanding of what fearing you really means. And give us generous hearts that want to love and serve you and the world around us. And to spread the good news of Jesus to all that we meet. Thank you for your love. And thank you for this time together. And we pray all in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed be the Lord our God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds, who alone does wondrous deeds. Blessed be His glorious name, His glorious name forever.
We have a new key passage this week, and it comes from Romans, the book of Romans, which is another book in the New Testament, and it's Romans 12, 5. It says, We, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. So what is that talking about? It's talking about the church. Remember our uh, big picture question, what is the church? It's the people who love God and worship him together and who want to obey him. So this, this relates to that. Again, Romans 12, 5, we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. We, as a church, we worship God together. We help each other. We support each other. And so we are we are, sometimes we call our, um, the church, the body of Christ. So that's what this passage is about. So put it on a sticky like I did, write it on an index card and practice it and maybe even come up with some hand motions too. Hey everybody, it's Pastor Steve. Sorry, it's a little dark. Uh, I'm recording this at night. Today's passage in Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 5, talking about Ananias and Sapphira, can seem very, very scary. And so instead of doing what I normally do and uh, telling you about how awesome Jesus is, who he is, I want to I want to explain something to you, and I want to make sure you know something. The thing I want you to know, the thing I want you to know, I want to make sure you know, is that you do not have to be afraid of God. The Bible actually talks about the fear of the Lord being a good thing, but that is talking about a, a respect and honoring for the Lord, the type of thing we want to have. What we don't want to do is think that somehow our sin, our rebellion against God, our, 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 our problems are not listening to him, are not following him, that can somehow make him mad at us and somehow he would stop loving us. Well, that's not how God works. And this is the awesome thing about Jesus, I get to tell you anyway. Jesus loves you even when you do things that are against what he wants. I have kids, some of you know them, some of you are friends with my kids, and sometimes they do things that make me sad, sometimes they do things that make me angry, but they can't do anything bad enough to make me stop loving them as my kids. God thinks that way about you because of Jesus. Now, if that's the case, Pastor Steve, Help me understand Acts chapter 5. What happens to Ananias and Sapphira? Well, two things happen. Number one, they lie to God. Their story is not a story of them not giving enough money to God. That's not it. Some people read this story and they think, oh, if I don't give enough to God, God will be mad at me. No. God isn't mad at you because of Jesus, who already gave everything. God is sad 
about Ananias and Sapphira lying to God. And just like many of the miracles that happen in the Old and the New Testaments, sometimes God has to make sure everyone takes him very seriously. And right around the New Testament, right at the very beginning of the church, God judges Ananias and Sapphira. The way he judges Pharaoh in the Old Testament with Moses, the way he judges many nations like Jericho when the walls come down with Joshua, the way he judges many bad kings in the Bible. And so to show his own power and his own glory, he ends their life. I can't explain that anymore. It isn't normal. Many, many people in the Bible do things that would make God sad or mad. And yet God forgives them and they go on to serve him. But Ananias and Sapphira weren't that way. Now, did they truly believe in Jesus? Why would they lie? I don't know. I don't know whether they truly believed in Jesus or not. If they did, then even their lying was not enough to make God stop loving them. I know this is big, and I know this might even be complicated for you. It's okay when there are parts of the Bible that don't seem to make sense. That's one of the wonderful things about loving Jesus and following him. You and I get to spend our entire life learning and seeking, asking questions, finding out more and more about our awesome and amazing God who loves us. But today, as you're in worship, know this. God takes his reputation very, very seriously. But you are already his child if you believe in him. Because of Jesus, there's nothing you can do to make him stop loving you. And you and I can take comfort in that our whole lives. Thanks so much for worshiping today. I hope you have a wonderful week. Let me give you this good word. May the God of mercy and forgiveness, for whom there is no place too high or no place too low, no place too dark or hidden, that he cannot find you, for whom there is no one too powerful, no one too strong, no one too mighty, nothing can pull you out of his hand. He keeps you and hugs you and holds you. Hope you have a good day, everybody.